the most autobiographical lyric uh, in the show from my perspective is when I was younger, I imagined what would happen if my parents had stayed in Puerto Rico. Like, who is that kid? Is that kid obsessed with you know, action movies and musicals. What do we honor um, that we are handed and what do we pass on? It's a story of a block that was disappearing once upon a time in a faraway land called Washington Heights. Who's gonna notice we're going? Say it so it doesn't disappear. Washington Heights! You know, I think Kiara's updated brilliantly. It really is her screenplay. I think it's a great way of honoring the original musical and updating it. You know, the fact that this begins and we see Usnavi on a beach narrating it, if you're a fan of the show, you know what that means and you go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Why aren't we in the bodega? So instantly you're, you're hooked in. And two, I think the fact that there are themes of immigration that have been updated, the fact that there is a, a major character that is beloved in the musical version that is undocumented and struggling with that, really puts a human face on that and puts you in um, that character's shoes and in their struggle. Um, I think that was really a smart update. And then the other one is that like, in the original version, gentrification is encroaching, right? Like they're all Latino owned businesses. That has happened um, by 2021. Like there is already that rich dry cleaner uh, on the corner. And it is a matter of like, how do we continue to survive and how do we adapt? Um, because that's the next conversation um, that Washington Heights is facing. That's what has been going on for the last couple of decades, especially in New York City, especially in with gentrification, with what we call now transplants and so on, the sense of being pushed out. But the beauty of it is that it keeps on going. The, the story is about moving and gentrification, but the story underneath the story is about community and how we take care of each other. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, it is what struck me when I first saw it. You might see this through a specific lens, but it is the story and themes that children and immigrant families feel in terms of wanting to do better in their lives and aspiring for dreams. And what is home? Where is home? Is it your community where you're fathers or parents are from or where I'm growing up right now. It's all of these concurrent themes are, are, are in the film and, and resonate even more now that we're coming out of this pandemic, I think. Our immigrant ancestors came here to make a better legacy for us because they were being persecuted, because they were trying to get a better life. This really highlights how, how uh, the dream is your joy and your um, pursuing your right to have a good life, right to have take up space in the world. This is the moment when you do better than me because you can see a future that I can. We all brought a lot of our personal experience to the roles that we are playing. For me, being first generation, uh, just like Nina, and having dreams bigger than a lot of like my family could metabolize. Uh, you know, we, we, we all relate to that and the pressure and responsibility um, to continue to dream that big so that, you know, the not only the younger generation that's looking up to you within your family gets to, you know, see you as this like, you know, North kind of star, but also like all the sacrifices that your family um, has made for you to even possibly dream this big um, aren't, you know, that you're not slapping all of that sacrifice in the face. Yeah, it's a great thing to get to see these two women, Nina and Vanessa, have completely different life experiences because Nina feels the pressure of her dad's dreams on her shoulders. And Vanessa has no family to like count on and she has to like do everything herself. And so it's this <laughs> spectrum of experiences within a community and, and how they're all fighting for their dreams, whatever they may be. And the pressures of the world and the pressures that you exert on yourself of like, I have to get here. I have to get out of this neighborhood because if I don't, I will never be able to make my dreams come true. I will never be able to grow. And I know that I related to that because I wanted to get out of my hometown. To have the life that I wanted and to do the career that I wanted to have, I needed to get out. I wasn't gonna be able to do it there. And, and it's almost like this feeling of like, this place is too small for me. 
and I need to like get out to be able to grow and to start from scratch. This is Navi says it in the movie, like, you know, once you get there, the things will come, the fame will come, the money will come. And that's not true. You know, when you place happiness as a destination, it it's not, you're never going to get there. Mm -hmm. It has to be within you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Vanessa realizes at the end when, you know, she inspiration strikes again in her neighborhood and she realizes, wow, like this place where I'm from and who I am is actually what makes me creative. The feeling of community is what makes these characters triumph over this invisible obstacle that stands between them and their dream. It is what Kiara and I felt we could write to most authentically. When you have parents who made a way where there was no way, um, and the the nuance of honoring the sacrifices they made so that you could do more than than they could do, um, and and yet find your own way in the world. And every character is dealing with some facet of that.